In the RunNav, Amadev and the Svalkit remote function came out about a week ago and today I want to make another video on them because in the last video I talked about how to set them up, what they are actually and what they can do. And today I want to give you like a more real world example on what they actually are and how I replaced them or not how I replaced them but how I replaced some old code with the new remote functions. We have this application right here, which probably looks familiar. I think you've already seen this. It's the it's my YouTube dashboard drag and drop application that I've built a while back. It's been nice to build this, but some of the features I couldn't fully implement because of fetch. And the remote functions allow me to do things that I couldn't do before. And today I want to go over how I did it. I unfortunately did not make a PR or a, like a separate branch for this, so I can't really um, show the difference to you like very well, like with diff but I still try to um, make it as good as possible. And actually, I'm going to look into the commits right now. Yeah, where that began was, this is like April 30, and then I didn't make anything for a long time. And these are, I think, bump versions. Yeah, I just replaced the versions here. And I added these um, experimental things in the spell config file. Here, I think... What did I do here? This, these are probably not important. Yeah, I could remove many things like remove all of these effects and states I declared here. Okay, so I think here's the important thing. So what we used to have is this fetch thing and I'm going to actually show it to you. So RPC video, let's say I have this. And for example, if I wanted to move this to here, it will always call a fetch function, fetch call, like this one. This is basically the, um, where do we have it? Yeah, this is the handle drop function, which gets called on drop. No use, yeah, here, on drop, that one. We handle the drop thing, and that actually, in our old version, that just made this try catch block with the fetch call. And, you know, this is just like a, type safe hell, like API drop ID, and then the target, like playing around with these um, query params or search params, I think they're called, uh, was just not the thing for me, which is why I also tried to not use them as much as I can. But at the same time, I was like, the form actions are also not perfect for this, um, because sometimes you need to pass in, like the ID as well, and then it's just not fun to work with, but I think these, like this drop thing, just gets the job done very well. Yeah, I can actually show it to you like directly in the code. We don't need to like look at this div here. Yeah, so we have projects.remote.ts here, and we have the page here. I think this is the drop board, right? Lib projects.remote, yep. So we have this drop thing here, which is a command, right? Yeah, it is a command. And we have a validator here, which is um, is either object and it takes an ID and the target, meaning the ID should be the ID of the project that is moved, meaning the ID of this thing. Let's say we move it here. And the target is basically to do, re-record in progress, done in scrap. So for example, if we would scrap this, we put it here. And yeah, it looks very smooth though. And this, yeah, we do everything, like all our mutations we do in here. Like if you compare this, um, compare this logic here to like this logic, it's pretty similar, except that we don't need to like check for, um, check if this search param is actually number and stuff like just headaches. So this is type safe and way better. And I know when I do this, this is also just a fetch wrapper. But my point is, and I think the point of these things is just that they're more type safe and easier to work with. So don't come with the argument that they're also just a fetch wrapper. Please don't. So uh, furthermore, you can see that it updates right away. It does not like fade any or anything. And this is actually pretty nice because we can, I think, take this away yeah so if you do this yeah this is a bug that sometimes occurs 
Oh, I don't know really why it's happening. You gotta wait a bit. See that? It does not update instantly. This is why we update optimistically. So that we have so that we have like an instant upload. And I think I already showed this in the last video where I like made a little tutorial on these. But actually we just need to do this updates and then we pass in the query that is updating. And the crucial part this is with override. Um, which basically which basically tells it to um, what to do. So we basically map this and then we have the status target containers and we just change the array and then it gets validated after. So this is basically the optimistic update we're doing here. And I think also the renaming works very well. Yeah, it does. Um, does not currently. Is this something I need to work on? As you can see, also the counter up here uploads perfectly, like real time. It's it's very nice actually. I too. Like if we do this, it updates instantly. The thing with the IDs, uh, or the thing that like creating a new thing is not optimistically updating is something I need to work on. Because um as you can see, um test project. To do that, it kind of needs to load a bit. And I haven't yet figured out how to um how I would do this. Uh, in the perfect way, maybe show some loading indicators or something, because in my opinion, this is not how it should work right now. And I think we need to work on, or I need to work on this. It has been a very nice experience to work with with these remote functions. And as you can see, we have currently two remote files. We have, uh, let's say, let's see, we have the get user, which is a query, um, which gets the user, of course. We have the get projects which gets all of the projects from a user we have a get project which takes in the number um, of the project we actually want to grab and the queries the database like very easy then we have the form actions where we insert a project where we update a project and finally you have a update date command oh yeah the update date is actually very nice very cool um, it also uses the optimistic update things. So if we go ahead and do um, for today, um, it instantly updates over here as well. And also remove the date. Like it's super snappy. And we can refresh and it should be still the 27th of August. There it is. I hope I could give you like a little insight on how to actually use them, use these remote functions in prod. Um, they're very cool. I actually also deployed this already, I think. Yeah, let's see. Um, it should be dash dot neville friend dot com. Yeah, it is. Okay. This is a little bug I need to work on. This as well. Why why doesn't it like refresh instantly? I don't get it. Probably skill issue from my side. But um yeah, I need to work on this. And I also need to work on the homepage. It's public. You can use it if you want to. I mean, expect like database deletions um, from time to time because I break something in prod. It's not meant to be in prod. It's just meant to be a little side project for myself and the side project to try out this drag and drop library. I really like it though. I hope you like this video as well. Please comment down below what you think of the new um, remote functions. Will you use them in prod yet? Because I will definitely do um, if I have figured out how to solve all of these bugs. But um, until then, I will probably use them. By the way, um, I'm talking about tutorial for a long time now, like since March or something. But I just wanted for things to be completed for a bit. Like, first of all, it was Svelte 5 that I waited to come out, like finally. When Svelte 5 came out, I wanted Shatsy and Svelte to be like fully ready for Svelte 5 because, you know, Svelte 5 was actually ready for a very long time with these runes and stuff, and they had the beta. Um, furthermore, it is the remote functions that have just came out, then Telmund V4, and on top of that, the ISDK V5 also just came out, and I want to play around with the V5 as well. So yeah, this is uh, why the tutorial has been taking so long. I wanted to... I want it to be perfect and to last a bit, you know, like I know things are moving very fast in the web dev world, but I don't want to record a tutorial and it gets outdated in a week. 
so or it gets outdated as I record, that would be actually funnier. So yeah, this is what I this is why I didn't do it before and why it's certainly gonna come out in the next few weeks. So yeah, till then, see ya. <laughs>